Hello, welcome back to Mark's Garden UK at Rose Cottage near Nantwich in Cheshire. In this video, I'm going to share with you five gardening mistakes. In fact, one of them is a disaster. You see a lot of videos on YouTube about gardening and it always seems to me that it's always wonderful and everything's going well, but I'm afraid in my garden, that's far from the case. So I'm going to share with you five of the things which I've done wrong this year which I've learnt from and share with you the things that I've learnt and what I can do differently and better next time. And the first one of those mistakes I find hilarious just to look at because it's my veg patch down here to my left. Let me show you. Isn't it pathetic? I mean, these are cabbages and cauliflowers and there's a, a row of purple sprouting broccoli to the left. And the mistake I made here is clearly not to net it or protect it from butterflies. I've watched the butterflies come down laying eggs. I can see thousands of caterpillars raging from tiny ones to quite fat ones. And they're all having a wonderful time dining out on my cabbages. So the big learn from this is to put a net over. Now I have been advised to make sure it's a fine net, a sturdy net so that the birds don't get caught in it. Also I've been told that if I spray these with a mild washing up liquid solution it will get rid of all these caterpillars. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put this one down to experience and next year I'm going to protect my vegetables because I don't want this to happen again. These can enjoy my crop this year it might go beyond their season, they may all turn into chrysalises and get eaten by birds and I may end up with something from the centre, who knows, I hope so. Um, but for now, a huge, laughable, hilarious disaster. My neighbours walk down the lane past this crop and <laughs> some of them know I'm into gardening so they must be laughing at me looking at this and indeed I'm laughing at myself. So that's mistake one, number one, protect my vegetables. Now mistake number two is one that I'm not particularly happy about. I can't laugh at this one I'm afraid. Look at this incredible red banana here. Ensete Marillii, Ensete Ventricosa Marillii. There's several videos on this on my channel. I've had this five years and I had two. The thing about these is they can't stay out over winter. You've got to dig them up and take them in. Some people put them in dry compost, others invert them so that the waters run off them and then they just dry out. And there's a video on winter protection on my website. It's an incredible specimen of a plant, but I had two. I brought them out at the same time, having treated them last winter exactly the same. And when they both came out, they were both in exactly the same condition. This one survived. The other one, which was equally large, unfortunately didn't survive. And I think I know what I did wrong. Let me show you. I think I brought it out too soon and I put it in exactly the wrong position. I put it here. That's my outside tap. This earth is always wet through. We had a bit of a drip on it. It was quite sodden. And so I put one of them here before it had really got growing, before it had really taken off for the summer as that one has. And unfortunately, I think it rotted before it could spring back to life. So what have I learned from that? Don't bring my bananas out too soon and don't put them anywhere too wet. Don't overwater them before they've really got growing. I've actually replaced it with another one here as compensation. This is an Ensete Marillii. And it will grow to the same size as that one eventually, but I will always regret putting this in a place that was too wet too early in the year. Now, I'm trying to make a positive out of a negative. And the stump from the one that died in inverted commas, I've quartered and I've planted, hoping that one of those quarters will grow on because that's how you propagate and set aim really are you, you quarter them. They don't produce pups like Musa Bajju, which you can see behind me. So anyway, let's move on to mistake number three. This is the worst of the five mistakes. The cabbages I can cope with, but this really did upset me. So gardening mistake number three has been with my hydrangeas. These are my hydrangea Annabelle. And my mum bought me three of these beautiful plants for my birthday in May. And I went away one weekend in July, ironically, to see my mum in Conway. And I came home that weekend and all the heads had blown off. I'd left them in a very windy position not realising how delicate they were. So two of them, that one there in front of me and the one behind me, 
were completely decimated. Fortunately, one of them survived a little bit. This is what they're supposed to look like, probably with a few more blooms than this. This did suffer some damage, but not quite as much. To turn a negative into a positive, I did take some cuttings from the branches of the two broken plants and I pruned them hard back and happily, they're really coming back strongly. So those plants will probably turn into very healthy, bushy plants. And I may even get some more bloom before the end of the year. But the thing I've learned about these plants is position. Never put hydrangea Annabelle in a windy position. And if you do, preferably don't, plant supports. I'm going to buy some of those tall plant supports made out of wire with a curly bit on the top. So that can support each and every head so that it doesn't get damaged. Now there is another form of Hydrangea Annabelle called Hydrangea Annabelle Strong. And the name says it all, it's much stronger than this and the blooms are much bigger. So there we go, mistake number three, support my Hydrangea Annabelle. But all is not lost because hopefully I'll get some free plants from the cuttings. Now my fourth gardening mistake this year is in my miniature. Veg plots. I was trying to see how much value I could get out of three small packets of seeds and I was a little bit overzealous and I over sowed the seeds and I ended up with hundreds of little lettuces in this small two by two raised bed. In fairness, I got quite a few leaves off them for salads using a kind of cut and come again approach uh, where the plants were left in the ground and I just took leaves off. But eventually, all the plants that were in there just ended up taking all the nourishment from the soil, competing with each other, becoming anemic, and they were on the verge of all dying off. Now, the mistake I made there was number one, was to over sow. I didn't need to use anywhere near as many seeds as I did. And number two, failing to thin out. So next year, I will under sow and I will thin out because it was a false economy. I ended up losing more plants by not thinning than I would have if I had thinned. Now, again, finally turning a negative into a positive. Of all the plants that were in this bed, I saved the best and I've put them back in. And you can see what they look like in my August update. I might find the clip and put it in this video, but they were looking pretty sorry. And some of them I've planted back into this bed and you can see they're on the grow again. They're coming back and before much longer now, I will be able to start taking leaves off them. I've got nine in that bed. I've got some lovely little gems here. On the plus side, my radishes did incredibly well. My spring onions did incredibly well. I've had some lovely carrots. These are little baby carrots here, but I've got some lovely carrots. You know the story on the brassicas. I won't go on about it. So mixed blessings with my vegetables. Learn. Don't over sow and do thin. Mistake number five coming up. And I'm bringing you mistake number five from the wildlife corner of the garden. In this, the wildlife pond, which I'm currently digging by hand, I've just done a video, an update on the wildlife pond, which you will find on my channel. But that's not the mistake. The mistake, mistake number five in my list of five mistakes is starting too many projects at the same time without finishing them. Now, that's probably necessary when you're a YouTuber because you need several strands running along concurrently, simultaneously. But it does have an effect because it kind of impacts your enjoyment of gardening because some of these projects end up hanging over you and you wake up at night thinking about them. When will I get that finished? Now, in my mind, everything's under control, but I am aware that people are waiting to see what's happening with this because they tell me, can we have an update? And that's wonderful. And I really do appreciate your engagement. I'm very humbled by the fact that so many people enjoy the videos, but I think the thing I've learned from that is number one, to not be too hard on myself because I am working hard in a garden and it's not a destination, it's an ongoing journey. So I am supposed to be enjoying it and it's not supposed to be easy but I will endeavor to try and finish projects, certainly the bigger ones before I start smaller ones. Hope you've enjoyed it. Please do subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thanks again for commenting. There's so many, too many to mention, but I really do appreciate. I try and answer every message. Don't forget to hit the like button if you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you soon.